I'm sure as I'm talking now, you know, your, your, your mind is, is, is going to, ah, that person who did me evil, Alexandra the coppersmith, that did you evil. You, 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 you remember, maybe in your office or, or somewhere. Or in, some of you even remember some, you know, one, one teacher that flogged you terribly in school. You remember, okay? Because you will always remember people for that. Now, legacy is simply asking yourself, the question, what will I be remembered for? We're talking about the man and his family, and I'm going somewhere. What will I be remembered for? This means uh, legacy is intentional. Legacy is deliberate. <laughs> uh, it means legacy is a conscious daily activity. A conscious daily activity. A conscious daily activity. A conscious, I, I, I'm, I'm stressing that so that you can know it's a conscious, it's not something that you do once and then, you know, no, no, no. It's a conscious daily activity. Legacy actually is daily deposits that yield perennial interests. Daily deposits that yield perennial interests. Now, what do I mean? Your family, therefore, Gentlemen, your family, therefore, is your first port of call when, uh, now, on, you know, on your journey of, of legacy deposits. Your family is your first port of call. Is your first port of call. <laughs> because this is, this, this is crucial. Your family is the first place. Now, you, I'm sure you've read the scripture that says, Proverbs 13, verse 22. It says, a good man. Am I right? Aha. Uh -huh. Or you can say a macho man in this, in this, in this sense. Uh, he said he leaves inheritance for his children's children. Am I correct? Now, what he leaves, see, the inheritance he's talking about there is not money. It's not material. It's not materials. No, it's not houses, not cars. That's not what, that's not what he's talking about. No, that's not what, he's, he's not talking about that. Now, after all, we, 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 now we read that we read that in, in Genesis 25, he said that now he said Isaac, that, that Abraham gave all he had, or he gave all he had to, to Isaac, and then he gave to and he gave gifts to the other children. Have you ever asked yourself if I give uh, 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 brother uh, brother Ugo all I have, what do I have left? No, no, let, let's let, let's talk. What do I have left? Uh -huh. So, but he says he gave all he had to Isaac, and then he gave gifts to the other people. What does that mean? It means that what he gave to Isaac was not was not material things. What he gave to Isaac was what made Abraham Abraham. So, when you see when you when, when you are leaving legacy for your children, therefore, it's not just money. Because if you leave money for someone whom you have not trained how to multiply money, you will squander the money. I don't know whether I'm talking to men now. Very important. <laughs> Very important. So, so, so a good man leaves inheritance for his children's children. So that is the inheritance. Now, what therefore is, now how therefore can I leave this inheritance? How am I going to leave it? The man and his family. Proverbs 23 and verse 26. Can you help me with King James Version, please? I would, I would, I would, I would appreciate that. He said, no, but look at it. He says, my son, give me your heart. You see that? And let your eyes do what? Observe my ways. Give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. Now, <laughs> what, what this guy is saying to his children and his household and his family and his wife inclusive, I'm sure you know that, is... <laughs> What you hear me say and what you see me do store in your heart. What you hear me say, what you see me do store in your heart. I want to ask a question, gentlemen. How did Solomon know what to ask God when he was given the golden opportunity? A blank check by God in 1, Corinthians, in 1 Kings chapter 3. How did he know what to ask God? Have you ever asked yourself that? How did, how, did, how, did, how did Solomon know? When God said, hey, Solomon, give me, now, ask me whatever it is that you want, and I'm going to give it to you. 
Solomon said, oh, God, you don't know something. <laughs> and he says, Lord, give me a wise and understanding heart to lead your people. How did he know what to ask? You want to know how he, know, how he knew? Legacy. Proverbs chapter 3. Look at, look at, I mean, Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs 4. Look at it. Proverbs 4 from verse 3. I would go from verse 3 to 7. I just read that to you. Proverbs 4, 3 to 7. Look at what it says. He says, look at it, look at it. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. Verse, the next verse. He taught me. He did what? Oh, oh no, no. He, he did what? He taught me and what? And said unto me, let your heart retain my words. Keep my commandments and live. Verse, verse 5. Go on. Get wisdom. And do what? And get understanding. He said, forget it not. He said, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Verse 6. He said, forsake her not. He said, and she shall preserve you, love her, and she shall, um, and she shall keep you. Verse 7. Verse 7. Verse 7. That's where I'm going. He said, wisdom is what? The principal thing. Therefore, do what? Get wisdom. And then he said, and with all you're getting. Get what? Understanding. So this guy knew from his father. Come on, say legacy. I didn't hear you say legacy. He knew from his father that, you know what? <laughs> Whenever you have the opportunity, every time you have the opportunity, I mean, pay the whole price to ensure that you get wisdom and in all that you get. Don't miss out understanding. Why? Because there is a thin line between, between understanding and wisdom, but there's a wide gap between knowledge and understanding. That you know doesn't mean you understand. Am I right? But when you understand, you can easily apply. Wisdom is application. So this guy knew. So when God now asked him, he said, ha, ha, ha. He said Lord, I know. And then, you know what God said? He said, ah. God said, ah. You said, you have, you have asked right. You will ask right. Amen. Oh, oh, I said you will ask right. Amen. Your children will ask right. Amen. Your wives will ask right. Amen. In the name of Jesus. So God said, you've, you've asked right. He said, you haven't asked for riches. You haven't asked for, no, you haven't asked for the last of the enemy. No, no. But you have, you've asked for this one. He said, I'm going to give you. Now, and, uh, um, now above that, uh, uh, well, in addition to that, I'm going to even give you what you have not asked me for. So shall be your case. Amen. So, so you discover, friends, that, that, uh, uh, um, um, uh, um, uh, uh, what, uh, now, uh, uh, legacy is what we do and what we say, how we live before our family. I ask myself, you know, where did Isaac learn how to, how to, how to hear God's reaction? From his father. Because Abraham started by hearing God. Am I right? So he taught, his, his, he taught Isaac. Uh, okay. And how did Isaac learn how to tell half-truth? No, 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 no. How did he learn how to tell, tell half truth? From his dad. Because dad was always saying to Sarah, Sarah, tell them you are my sister. That was true, but also <laughs> he was his wife. So it was half truth. And so, and so Isaac picked it up. And in Genesis 26, he said, hey, he said, he said, uh, 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 he said, Rebbe, Rebbe, you know what? You know, <laughs> don't tell them you are my wife. Tell them you are my sister. That was true, but that was half truth. He learned that from his dad. What you say, what you do, is registering in your, in your heart without you knowing it. It's registering, in fact, what you do register more than what you say. What you do register more than what you say. So, it is sight and sound for success or sight and sound for sorrow. It is sight and sound for success or sight and sound for sorrow. Because what they see consistently will enter their hearts. And what they hear repeatedly will enter their heart. And what, they, uh, no, and what enters their heart will shape their perspectives of life or their belief system. And their belief system, friends, will dictate their behaviors. And their behaviors will determine their outcomes in life. Should I say that again? Yeah. 
What they see consistently will enter their hearts. What they hear repeatedly will enter their hearts. What enters their hearts will shape their perspectives to life or their belief system. That's what that's that's their perspective because their belief system is the, is the, will be their perspective perspective to life, and then their belief system will dictate their behaviors. The way they talk, the way they, 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 they act and all that. And their behaviors will determine their outcomes in life. So, when you look at your, at, your, at, your, at your children, or when you look at some people today, go back to their homes. When you look at the way people turn out today, go back to their homes. Go back to their homes. And men, we have a huge responsibility. When it comes to this, and I'm sure this is why, you know, uh, uh, um, the reason, the, you know, this is why David was praying in Psalm 101 and verse two, Psalm 101 verse two. Now David prayed. Now David was well. He said this, you know, not, not even the prayer. It was it was a statement from his heart. He says, because 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 my now because my family, uh, uh, you know, my wife, my children, my entire household now. You know, will behave uh, by reason of what they see and what they hear from me. He says, you know what I will do? Look at it. Let's read together. One, two, go. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when will that come unto me? He was talking to God about that. And then he says, let's read, let's read that together. One, two, go. I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. You see that? I will walk within my house. With a, say, I will behave myself wisely. I will behave. So, see, 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 it has to be a conscious thing that, you know, uh, 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 it, no, it, see, it has to come from, from a consciousness. It has to be deliberate. It has to be intentional. He says, I will. It is, it's a matter of will. So, he engages with say, I will, I will behave myself wisely. Why? Because I know my child is watching. I will behave myself wisely. Why? Because I know my wife is watching. Oh, I will behave myself wisely. Why? Because I know my daughter is watching. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. In a per- now, it may not be convenient, but I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. He said, when will you come to me, Lord? So God, that even God is waiting to come into your home by, the, by reason of your behavior. By reason of my behavior. And then he says, I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. <laughs> Let me give you this information or this or, or give you these reminders. These reminders, notifications. Number one, that you are the leader of your family. You are the leader of your family. And a leader. Provide, now, gives the vision and the direction. That's the macho man. Giving, uh, because I heard, I heard, um, um, uh, uh, you know, I heard Brother Daly talking about that just now. That you, the, uh, you are the leader of your family. And as a leader, you give the vision and the direction to your family. When God wants to do anything in your family, it is you that he will come to, not your wife. It's you that he will come to, not your, not your children. Therefore, you are the leader. And, t- <coughs> and, and the point is, now, everything rises or falls on leadership, according to John Maxwell. Everything rises or falls on leadership. So, when we see your family, we see your leadership. When we see your family, we see your leadership. Just like when we see your organization, we see your leadership. Am I right? Are we still friends? <laughs> when we see your organization, we see your, we are, we're seeing your leadership. When we see your church, Pastor, we see your leadership. So when we see your family, man, we see your leadership. So you are the leader of your family. Say to yourself, I am the leader of my family. 
Uh -huh. Number two, number two, that number two reminder is you are the priest of your family. I am the priest of my family. Now, what does the, and what does a, a priest do? A priest is responsible for the spiritual covering, spiritual guidance, and spiritual development of the family. Are we getting something? You are the leader. Take responsibility for your leadership. I am the leader. I must take responsibility for my leadership. Because <laughs> as, as uh, you know, uh, uh, um, how do I want to say this now? The way the leader goes, the way the follower goes. Am I right? And I'm, I'm sure you have heard the saying that you know, it was, I read it many years ago from, from uh, John Mason's book, um, An Enemy Called Average. He said, one of the topics there, one of the nuggets there said that an army of sheep led by a lion will always defeat an army of lions led by a sheep. So, which one is your family? Is it an army of, of sheep led by a lion or an army of lions led by a sheep? So, that, what, that, what that system is saying is, he's just talking about leadership. 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 So, you are the priest of your family. You provide spiritual guidance. You must provide spiritual, uh, uh, sorry, spiritual covering, spiritual guidance, and spiritual development. <laughs> Number three, you are the king. Over your family. The king over your family. <laughs> now, and as a king, you are not to rule over them, but <laughs> as a king, you are supposed to provide security for them and welfare. Security and welfare. Defense for your family. Defense for... Now you have to provide security and welfare for your family. We're told... <laughs> That he who does not provide, is that, is, that, is that if any does not provide for his house, is this say if any man? That's not what the Bible said. He said if any. Because if it's if any man, then what would the widow do? <laughs> so the widow is exempted. Or the single mother is exempted. No, no. If any, as long as you have responsibility over your home. Know the state of your family or each member per time. Very crucial. Very crucial. <laughs> because when God needs anything in your family, it's you he would ask. Adam, where are you? Am I right? Did he go to Eve and ask, uh, Eve, where is Adam? No, no. Adam, where are you? <laughs> so if he needs anything, he's just gone. He's going to come to you. He won't to anybody. You won't go to your child. You won't go to your wife. It will come to you. So say to yourself, I am the accounting officer over my, over my, over my family. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Number five, you are the coach. You are the coach of your family. You are the coach of your family. You are responsible for whom and what they become. You are responsible for whom and for what they become. You are responsible for whom and what they become. You are responsible for whom and what they become. Now listen, God said about Abraham. He said, I know him. So I know this guy. So I know Abraham because he will command his, his children after him. Am I correct? And look at it. Look at the coach. Look at the coach. Look at the coach. In Genesis 14, 14, the Bible says that this man had 318 servants born in his house. Three, uh, so, yeah, yeah, they were trained in his house. Okay. Now, see, 318 and 318 went after five kings, three or four, about, about three or four or five kings, and, and with all their armies, and they, and they conquered them and took back what, uh, now, what they're taking from, from Lot and from Sodom and, and Gomorrah. Now, hear this. That's a macho man. That's a macho man. No, that's a macho man. That's a macho man. Now, it wasn't that at that time, he didn't, he, don't forget that at that time, that this, this guy did not have 
uh, you know, he didn't, he didn't have his own children as it were yet, but he had servants in his house, meaning that even the way you relate with your housemate is crucial. I'm, I'm sure it's different. <laughs> you are the coach. Oh, sir, you are the coach. You are the coach. So stop blaming um was 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 uh uh what's Liverpool's coach the, the coach the name? Eh? Club, okay, yeah, uh, that's jogging that be jogging club. Now don't stop blaming him because the mistake is the mistakes he's making, you are making. No, seriously. So so when it's, now when you see a club doing well, you say, ah, good manager. So when we see your family doing well, good, good husband. Are we together? <laughs> good husband. Good husband. Good husband. When we see your family doing well, we say good husband. You are the coach. Say to yourself, I'm the coach. Mm, number six, you are the thermostat. I'm oh, sorry, you are the th- uh, uh, yeah, you are the thermostat of your family. <laughs> you are what? The thermostat of your family. What does the thermostat do? Eh? It controls. It, it's a, therm- a, a thermometer checks the checks the, the temperature. But a thermostat, I mean, sorry, yeah, yeah, a thermostat controls, regulates, determines the 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 temperature of the atmosphere. So, therefore, it means that you are the one who determines the temperature of your family, the spiritual temperature, the financial temperature. You are the one who determines now what happens in your home every time. You see? Uh, now, 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 now. Let me let, let me say. I, I wanted to start this with, by sharing my, my my story with you, but but this is how God is leading me. But let me say this. Let me say this. Now, I was married for twenty six years. I know you know you know. Of course, I lost my uh, my wife went to me. I didn't lose my I didn't lose her. She went to be with the Lord. Now, we were married twenty uh, third December nineteen eighty nine. She passed on February February fourteen twenty sixteen. Okay, now, at the age of 55, now look at it. That marriage produced two children. A, ma- uh, a female who is 29 years now, and then a male who will be 27 um, in August. <laughs> I determine the atmosphere of my home. Now, after that, to the glory of God, I'm now I'm remarried, and it's going to three years now. By December 19, it should be three years that I've been married. You know what I've discovered? In 26 years plus two years plus, two different women, two different families, same principle. I de- I, I determine the atmosphere of my home. If I am frowning, my wife will not be happy. If I am frowning, my children will not, will, will not be playing. Why? I determine the, asp- the atmosphere. Sir, ma. Oh, sorry, sir. <laughs> Make your home a home of fun. Make your home a home of freedom. Where, where the children can, can, can express themselves freely. Because if you don't raise the, the, the children that can express themselves freely, you will not raise confident children. You determine the atmosphere. So, you determine the atmosphere. So the question you want to ask yourself is, what kind of atmosphere do you want to do you want to have in your home? So David says, I will say, I will behave myself wisely in the perfect way. I will walk within my house with the that with the perfect heart. Am I right? So I, this is what I want in my home. This is the way I want my home to be. I want, but see, I don't want my I don't want to enter to enter the house and then and then my children are, are oh, you know, it's like oh, <laughs> the man has come. And everybody just go no 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 no. I, 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 see, by the time you you see, let them be be be, be, ex, be excited that, that you are back. Let me say this to you. As a man, the day your daughter tell, tells you, "Daddy, I would love to marry a man like you," you have succeeded. Today. 
Should I say that again? The day your daughter tells you, Dad, or tells her brother, or tells her mom, or tells her friends, I'd love to marry a man like my daddy. You have succeeded. You know why she can say that? You know why she can say that? She has watched you. She has watched the way you, 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 you treated or you were treating her mother. She has watched the way that you, that, that you are relating with her, with her mother. She, she has watched the way that you are relating with them. She has watched the way that you are relating with other people. They, they have, they've watched you. They've seen everything about you. And, say, ah! and then they see the, the atmosphere of their home. I said, wow! This is the kind of home I want to have. And for me to have this kind of home, I need this kind of man. That will be your portion. Uh, I said, that will be your portion. That will be your testimony. And you know what? It can, see, you can, there, there, is no, there is no better time to do anything. Now is the best time. Now is the best time. So, friends, you need to realize, therefore, that your family is a reflection of you. Your family is a reflection of you. A reflection of you. It's a reflection of your values. Your family is a reflection of your values. Your family is a reflection of your vision. Your family is a reflection of your legacy or the legacy you intend to live. Your family is a reflection of your character. Your family is a reflection of your maturity. Your family is a reflection of your spirituality. Your family is a reflection of your experiences in life. Your family is a reflection of your exposures in life. Your family is a reflection of your wisdom. Your family is a reflection of your of your of your of your of your of your, of your people management and relational skills. Your family. I know I'm, I'm very fast. I'm sorry about that, but I can listen to it again. Your family is a reflection of your people management and relational skills. Oh, oh, oh. Your family is a reflection of your investments. Your investments. You can't be wearing Gucci. And your and your and your children are wearing bed down boutique. No, 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 no. You can't be the the best dressed, and then we are looking. Where is your wife? No, no, no. You want to, you want now? I want you. I want you. You know how I will know you. You know I want you. I want you. Now I will know a macho man. A macho man would. A, a macho man would just would 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 would, would, would um, like. Like you are, you are, you are, you are advertising your family. When your family shows up, we look at your children. We look at the way they are packaged. We look at your wife. We look at the way she's packaged. We say, ah, ah. So then they will be looking. So who, who, who is the husband of this, of this, of this, um, of this model? Who is the father of this, of these children? We're looking for. And then we see you just simply dressed with you no know, nice, nice new dress. Nice shoes, where we know that your shoe is costly. We look at your belt, your shoe, your belt is, mm, is, is singing. And then we look at your wristwatch, we know that is 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 um, is shouting. But then we just see, but when we look at your family, say, ah, this family is, 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 is well taken care of. That's a macho man. That's a macho man. That's a macho man. That's a macho man. Your family exposes your real self to the world. What we see of you is what you want us to see and know. But your family reveals to us who you really are. Because they, they know you in and out. So, the way you relate with them and the way you live before them is what will be now is what they will that is the way it, uh, we show in the way they relate with other people and the way they live before other people. Are we together? Are we together? Very important. Very important. So, friends, what you don't want them to believe, don't say or do. How you don't want how you don't want them to behave, don't exemplify. Question, therefore, is how do you relate with your wife? 
Because the way you treat or relate with your wife is telling your son how to relate with or treat his wife in future. Or how to relate or treat women. Or how to relate or treat his sister. Are we together? Because they see you. Because see, you, 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 are, you are the role model that they're looking at. You are the one that look, say you are the role model. So they'll just look at this. Ah, okay. So this is how eh, the day you slap your wife, ah, say, eh, so women are punching bags. <laughs> so they too now when they get married, or if when they go to school, it will it will be easy for them to slap a lady. Am I right? But when they see the way you take care of your wife, say, ah, women are delicate. So we have to delicately take care of them. That's the way it works. That's the way it, 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 it works. So it, it, it starts from the home. It starts from the home. You are the you are the you are the you are the thermostat in your home. You 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 dictate the atmosphere. All right. So how do you relate with your children? How do you relate with your house helps with your domestic staff? See, sometimes sometimes we uh, now <laughs> we make our children believe. That those domestic staff are their staff. They are not your, they are not their staff. I read about Rockefeller. Uh, you know, I learned that, that Rockefeller taught his children work, the principles of work, that's industry. He taught them generosity and he taught them how to save. And so, see, now, so when you look at now, many of the, of the billionaires you see in the world today, now, they don't just, see, they, they, they just bring their children from anywhere and, uh, you know, and put them at the helm of affairs. No, their children will go through the ranks. Am I right? Oh, come on now. Am I correct? They will, they will, they will start from, they will start they, because they're, they're saying to them, you know what? That's where you're going, but you know, you know what? So that you can be touched by the feelings of the infirmity of the people. Go through what they're going through. Experience what they're experiencing. So that by the time you get to the top and they're telling you that ah, this is what we are experiencing, you, that it will be so easy for you to tell, ah, it's okay, yeah, yeah. Jesus is Lord. So he says, my son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. Please take these tips. How to relate with your wife. Seek to understand your wife. Seek to understand her. Number two, build your wife to the level that she can build your home. Because a wise woman builds her house. And I put it there that according to the visionary template given by the husband. So the man builds the wife, the wife builds the home. Number, number three, Nourish your wife. Nourish, that is, feed your wife with knowledge, good food, good outfits. I mean, everything she needs to be better. Because the better she gets, the better for you. The better she gets, the better for you. Number next, cherish your wife. Cherish her wisdom. Cherish her. I mean, Carry her like, like, a, like a raw egg that must not fall. <laughs> cherish her. Make her. Now, oh God. Cherish her wisdom. Cherish her beauty. Cherish, cherish her contribution. Cherish, cherish her hard work. Cherish your wife. Cherish your wife. Hmm. Cherish your wife. Next, if you don't want to keep struggling forever, if you don't want to keep struggling forever, make your wife happy. If you don't want to keep struggling forever, make your wife happy. Next, please, please, please and please, don't scold or shout on or quarrel with or argue with your wife before your children. I beg of you. I beg of you. I beg of you. Next, Pray with and for your wife. Listen to this. Whatever you cherish, you will nourish. And whatever you nourish will flourish. 
If you cherish her, you will nourish her. If you nourish her, she will flourish. Your children, train them. Train your children. <laughs> There's a whole lot. Please, train your children. Don't forget you are the leader. Don't forget you are the coach. Don't forget you are the you are you are you are the you are the um, uh, uh, you are the accounting officer. I mean, I've listed all these things. You see, train your children. Train them. Train them. Train them how to pray. Train them how to respect elders. Train them how to how to relate with people. Train them. You know, I, I went somewhere and somebody uh, there was this um, you know young boy about sixteen years old wanted to give greet, greet an elderly lady, and then. You know, of course, the, 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 the boy came to her and said, Ah, oh, you know, um, uh, uh, he, said, he, said, he said, Good morning, ma. Um, I don't think I've missed you. And then, uh, and then you know, told her, told her his name and then stretched out his hand to shake the, to shake the lady. <laughs> I said, No. You don't stretch, number one, you don't stretch your hand as a male to, to shake a lady. That's number one. Number two, as a younger person, you don't stretch your hand to greet an elderly person. You see it? Train your children. Train them. Train them. There's so much you train your children on, friends. So much. That's why I said to you that your family is, is a reflection of your experiences and your exposure. Train them. Train them. Train them. Train them. Thank you. Because I wanted to be sure of my time. Thank you. Train them. Please train your children. Please train your children. David left four legacies for, you know, for, for Solomon. Number one, he left the, the God legacy for him. The God legacy. The God legacy. And the legacy is love God, number one, worship God, or obey God. To, to worship means to simply obey God. That's it. Worship is obedience. Love him. Love God. Obey God. That, that he left this, this legacy for him. The God legacy. Number two, he left the giving legacy. The giving legacy. Giving legacy. And what do you give? You give your time and your treasure. Your time and your treasure. Your time and your treasure. Every giving is, is under this. Your time and your treasure. Number three thing that he left, with, well, well, number three legacy that I left for him is the greatness legacy. The greatness legacy. What's the greatness legacy? The greatness legacy is simply, now, it's simply hanging on two things. Solution and service. You cannot be great without solving problems and you cannot be great without, without being in service to your generation. So he, so, he, so he left these two legacies for, now, for, his, for, for, for Solomon. Number four legacy that he left for him was the gratitude legacy. The gratitude legacy. What do I mean by that? Now, he, he taught him to, uh, he left the legacy to be grateful to God for what he has done, what he's doing, and for what he has promised to do. And then number two, to be grateful to people that are a blessing to you. To appreciate people. He left those four legacies. I'm talking about the family. And so we saw these things happening in, in Solomon's life. Number one, he went to worship. He went, Solomon went to worship. He must have seen the father worshiping God. Reality check is, I want to ask you, do you worship God before your household and with your household? If, if no, why not? If yes, how well? If well, how often? So, would you be happy seeing your children worship God exactly the way you do now? It's a reality check. Number two, we, we, did, we saw that Solomon offered sacrifices to God. He must have seen his father offering, offering sacrifices to God many times, many times. Many times. Reality check, friends. Reality check. <clears throat> what, what, what services are you offering to God and to humanity? Both in the house of God and of course, you know, outside the house of God. What sacrificial offerings are you giving to God and his kingdom apart from tithes and offerings? What other sacrificial offerings are you giving? Please note, whatever sacrifices you are making, 
whatever offerings you are giving, <laughs> your children are watching. Your grandchildren are seeing what you are, what you are doing and is storing in their hearts. And one day, they're going to replay it. Number three, Solomon loved the Lord. Solomon loved the Lord. <laughs> he loved the Lord because he saw that his father loved the Lord. Reality check, friends. How much do you know God and how much do you love God? How visible is that knowledge displayed before your children and before your family? How, how visible? Now, you see, because the thing is that if you claim that you love God and you don't show the love to your, to your family, then you don't love God. If you claim that you love God and you don't show the love to people around you, then you don't really love God. If you claim that you love God and you don't show the love to your driver, you really don't love God. Number four. <laughs> Number four. Solomon asked for a wise and understanding heart to lead, not to rule. To lead, not to rule. Reality check. Reality check. What's your priority prayer? What is your priority prayer? What would be your children's priority prayer? Very important. On the flip side, Solomon loved many women. Am I right? Why? Because he saw daddy, that daddy loved women. You see, you see how this thing is? Daddy loved women. So Solomon also just speaks, ah, this is how to do it. So if my father had um, about less than 10 wives, then let me, let me, let me, let me do <laughs> a thousand times more than my father. That's the way it works. That's the way, see, whether positive or negative, that's the way it works. That's the way it works. Finally, let me just say this, and I'll drop the mic. Four questions that you answer. Number one, what legacy do you want to leave? What legacy do you want to leave? Number two, what legacy are you leaving? Because everything you do daily is a legacy you are leaving. Someone is seeing it. Someone is storing it in their hard disk. Number three. Do your actions mark your, I mean, match your intentions? Do your actions mark, match your intentions? Number four, what would you do from today to leave the right legacy? What would you do from today to leave the right legacy? Friends, you may be able to do nothing about the past, but you can sure do something about the future. Simply by what you start doing with the present, in the present, from the present. You may not, I mean, you may be able to do nothing about the past because the past is past. So you have to put the past in the past. But then you can do something about the future, okay, by what you start doing with the present, in the present, from the present. With the present, in the present, from the present. My prayer for you is that your family shall be a role model family. Amen. Oh, I said your family shall be a role model family. Amen. Your family shall be a role model family. Amen. Your family shall be a role model family. Amen. Your family shall be that family that every other family is. I want my I want my wife to be like this wife, that this like this woman. I want my children to be like these children. Ah! And we won't even let this be. I want, I want to marry a man like this man in the name of Jesus Christ. God will, God will raise your family to the level whereby your family will become a point of contact for other families in the name of Jesus Christ. So, oh Lord, I want, I want to have a family like this family in the precious name of Jesus Christ. I want to have a home like this home in the name of Jesus Christ. I want a home that is, that, that has respect, that has love, that has understanding, that has oneness, that has unity like this family in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is what God will make your family. That is what God will make your wife and your children and even you as a husband in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 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 Your family is a reflection of you. And God will make you to be that man that will reflect what he has ordained for you to be as the head of your home in Jesus' precious name. Thank you for this opportunity. God bless you.